Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for contracting, on-site training, and code reviews. Now, if you've been paying attention lately, you might have noticed that I have done a lot of episodes on Lambdas. And you might be like, hey, Jason, what's with all of the episodes about Lambdas? And that's a pretty good question. And, uh, well, there, there actually is a good reason for it. And I've spent a lot of time with C++ and with Lambdas, obviously, and I've come to a realization, and I thought it was something that I would share with the uh, viewers of C++ Weekly here. Now, I'm using Compiler Explorer here for, well, absolutely no particularly good reason whatsoever, just because it's a tool that I happen to have up. But I'm not actually going to do any programming today. I'm just going to write some comments. Lambdas if you've watched all of the episodes here and have been paying attention, are shockingly complex, simple things. So if we have done something like this, and actually maybe I will write some code, we've just defined a lambda. And this is a lambda that takes zero parameters, has zero captures, and returns void because it uses implicitly auto return type deduction and this is something that has been wrapped in a class with a handy call operator or operator paren whatever you want to call it operator overload so to understand what this line of code is doing you need to have some understanding of c++ classes member functions operator overloading and if you really understand how this particular operator overload that, that provides for you works, you need to understand what is const, what is mutable, what const expr is, and then if we talk about things that we can apply to our lambda, no except comes into play. And I already mentioned return type deduction. And we also can do trailing return types with our lambda. So that is trailing return types. And now going from here, if we were to add a parameter to this, say something like that, then we also need to understand templates, auto, and template deduction rules, because that will come into play at some point here, if I could spell rules. And all along here, we might be noticing, even though this disassembly is quite small, no assembly generated, that it's not generating any assembly. Well, okay, let's put a main function here. And let's call this L. Now, this is with optimizations disabled. I'm not passing any values. Let's go ahead and pass it a value. Now, we can see that it is generating this operator paren that says, oh, look, it's a template. Look, we had to know something about templates. Did I mention templates? I mentioned templates. And then this automatic uh, template type deduction here. Um, if we turn on the optimizer, then this is all going to go away. And we don't even have to turn the optimizer up real high because it's going to get in line. It's going to go away. So, oh, one, it goes away. So we need to understand the optimizer. And I mentioned no except and const expert, but that's just, you know, if we really understand how this stuff works, then yeah, I mean, it can be used in a const expert context as of C17, but before that it couldn't be. So that is, oh, oh, let's see, we're missing something else. Let's see, we can do this and make this a variadic. So that is, and with that being a variadic here, we could probably do something like this. And then we can actually throw fold expressions into this. I mean, it's not necessary to know them. Definitely something that is a natural consequence of using variadic, generic, 
lambdas that were added in C++14. So we've got classes, member functions, which kind of implies that you have to understand how fun functions work. Operator overloading, const, mutable, const expert, no except return type deduction, trailing return types, templates, auto, template deduction rules, the optimizer, variadic templates, fold expressions. Now, I did ask for a little bit of help when I was preparing this episode to see if I was missing something. So I am going to check that and see if I'm forgetting anything else. So after checking over my notes here, there's a couple more things that we might want to look at. Now, I didn't say objects, but well, objects. This lambda called L here, this is an object. We need to know something about it. So objects are in here. And then we've got this interesting case of So I am calling a function that returns an object. It's a string. I have optimizations at level one right now. Let's turn them up a little bit more so we get a little bit more inlining. And that thing goes away again. So to understand why this works, besides understanding the optimizer, you need to understand return value optimization, named return value optimization. What makes, so I've got uh, fold expressions, let's see. RVO, return value optimization, named return value optimization, those come into play and in what makes using immediately invoked function expressions or immediately invoked lambda expressions in C++ actually a very, very efficient way of composing our code. Um, and then on top of all of this, as uh, Ben Dean pointed out, that's uh, who I asked for help here, if you go and look at the standard on lambdas, it's one of the newest portions of the standard, so it is a little bit more succinct and easier to read. It doesn't have as much older baggage with it, necessarily. And then as we move into C++20, we're getting more and more aspects here that are being added to our lambdas. And we've seen that in the recent C++20 episodes that I have released about lambdas. So that brings us into things like ODR used and uh, compile time context, constructability, that just goes on and on. So I, I, I'm, I'm reaching about the end here, but at the moment we've got, what, uh, 22 things that I've listed. So. My argument here that I'm making to you is that fully understanding lambdas, what they're capable of, following them through the standard, understanding what changed, and understanding what they're going to be capable of in C++20 gives you every single aspect of C++ that is important. If you fully understand lambdas, you understand every part of C++ that matters in our real code every day. And as you can see, it is a long list. There's maybe a couple of things missing from this, but not very many. So to celebrate this, I went ahead and put together a playlist on the C++ Weekly channel. So you can go here to my C++ Lambdas playlist, and you can see I currently have 21 videos. This one will be the 22nd video in this. I should probably put them in some sort of order that makes sense, but they go back uh, from episode 32. So I've been talking about lambdas here pretty much since the beginning of C++ Weekly, and that's what I have to say. Check out these episodes, uh, share this list with your friends, and understand lambdas, and thereby gain a better understanding of C++. So thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe.